Hey all, welcome to ShareTrek. This is Raj here. Friends, I'm taking advantage of the low news days in our genomics watch list uh, to put a little bit more effort and give you uh, more uh, a deeper dive into our various genomic companies. Uh, I'm providing my understanding of low cell for sickle cell disease in a manner that you can compare it with exacell uh, that we discussed in uh, yesterday's video. My objective in doing all this is uh, to share uh, all my studies because when I invest in various companies, I like to know what is their product and what is the risk involved in it. So I do uh, a little bit of deep dive and uh, understand as much as I can so that I can manage my risks. And I thought, why not share that with you guys? Uh, because now we have a downtime as well. Uh, and, uh, all these uh, detailed uh, videos are part of my efforts to transfer my homework to you so that if you are um, talking to your spouse or your parent or whoever uh, who has got in, uh, interest in your investments and they ask you, how come you're investing in these products? Do you understand what is happening in there? you'd be able to tell them uh, a really good detail of in, uh, information so that they are also satisfied that you know what you're doing. So in this video, I'll create a context of the sickle cell disease and show you exactly how exacell and lower cell are different in their approach and yet they cure sickle cell disease. Please watch this video till the end and then leave your comment. But before we proceed, if you have a if you are being a channel regular and uh, watch our videos regularly but have not subscribed, Please subscribe right away and help us reach 5,000 subscribers. We are almost there and I want to experience that buzz, if not for a minute. And if you're already a subscriber, this is the beginning of the month and uh, you'll get the full month when you subscribe. So I urge you to take the next step and press the join button right away, become a channel member and support my work and come back to watch this video. Do the join right away. Okay, that's it. Let's get started. Welcome back, friends. I'm going to first uh, set up the context using a diagram, and um, I'll explain at a high level uh, how sickle cell disease happens and uh, how Bluebird and CRISPR therapeutics are handling it. And then I will come back on the screen and I will be talking to you about how Bluebird is tackling sickle cell disease uh, step by step. This way, I think that there will be a revision, there will be overall context, there will be a comparison, and then there will be uh, a high-level explanation of Bluebird, and finally, there will be detailed explanation of Bluebird's low cell. With that said, let me put up the diagram for you. Well, friends, in this diagram, what you are seeing is that uh, for an individual, uh, right from when they are a fetus up to the age of six months, uh, they produce uh, fetal hemoglobin. And why, you would ask, do they produce fetal, uh, fetal hemoglobin? They produce fetal hemoglobin because fetal hemoglobin has a very high capacity to carry oxygen. So when the child is developing in the womb, uh, the fetus needs uh, a lot of oxygen for uh, various organs and the brain, which is developing rapidly. The fetus grows very rapidly, and uh, there's a heavy oxygen requirement. And uh, the fetus would like to have very, very efficient uh, transport mechanism for oxygen from the mother's blood uh, into the fetus. And that's where fetal hemoglobin plays a very big role. However, uh, once the child is born and it's uh, uh, almost six months old, or in some case right up to a uh, year of age, uh, the fetal hemoglobin production starts tapering off uh, and adult hemoglobin starts becoming the predominant hemoglobin in the blood. So there is a gene called BCL11A uh, which kicks in uh, about six months of age. And the function of BCL11A is to suppress the production of fetal hemoglobin and promote the production of adult hemoglobin by enabling HBA gene and HBB gene. Now, what HBA gene does is it produces two alpha globins and HBB gene produces two beta globins. And when the two alpha globin and two beta globin combine, they create uh, a unit of adult uh, hemoglobin. Now, in case of sickle cell disease, the HBB gene is defective, as a result of which the beta globin that is produced is defective, and it results in an adult hemoglobin which has got sickle cells, as a result of which the person suffers from sickle cell disease. Now, the way Bluebird Bio is tackling uh, the problem is that they are correcting the HBB gene to restore a proper production of beta globin and therefore proper production of adult hemoglobin. 
The way CRISPR therapeutics handles it is it suppresses or switches off the BCL11A gene as a result of which adult hemoglobin is not promoted, HbA and HbB are not enabled, and fetal hemoglobin production resumes. And fetal hemoglobin has got the ability to pick up a lot of oxygen, so the person is back to normal because of this. So these are the two distinct ways in which the two therapies work. So having explained that, now I would like to get into uh, the uh, description of how Bluebird works. As I said, as an infant uh, nears the age of six months, BCL11A expression increases, and this process shuts down the fetal hemoglobin production, uh, enabling the production of adult hemoglobin or HbA. Uh, adult hemoglobin proteins involve two key parts, HbB, which is hemoglobin subunit beta, and HbA, which is hemoglobin subunit alpha. In, ca uh, in case of people with sickle cell disease, uh, genetic mutations in HBB gene cause the disease. One way to cure sickle cell disease is by fixing the HBB gene defect, and another way is by switching off BCL11A to enable production of fetal hemoglobin. HBB or uh, hemoglobin subunit beta is a gene that encodes a crucial protein component of hemoglobin, a molecule found in red blood cells responsible for oxygen transport in the bloodstream. HBB is one of the two globin genes uh, that play a central role in hemoglobin production, the other being HBA or hemoglobin subunit alpha. Here's how HBB and hemoglobin work in the context of blood disorders like sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia. In individuals without these uh, blood disorders, the HBB gene provides instructions for the synthesis of the beta globin subunit, which together with the alpha globin subunit produced by the HBA gene forms the normal adult hemoglobin uh, known as hemoglobin A or HBA. HBA is responsible for efficiently carrying oxygen throughout the body. In individuals with sickle cell disease and some forms of beta thalassemia, there are genetic mutations in the HBB gene that results in abnormal uh, beta globin subunits. For example, in sickle cell disease, a common mutation leads to the production of hem hemoglobin known as hem hemoglobin S, uh, HBS, which can cause red blood cell to become misshapen and less able to carry oxygen. In beta thalassemia, various mutations in the HBB gene can result in reduced or absent production of beta globin subunits, leading to insufficient HBA. These mutations in the HBB genes can cause, uh, can lead to significant health problems. In sickle cell disease, for instance, the misshapen HBS molecules can cause uh, red blood cells to become sickle shaped, uh, leading to pain organ damage through uh, vascular occlusive events or VOEs that happen on a regular frequency and uh, also lead to other complications. In beta thalassemia, reduced HBA production can result in anemia, fatigue, and other symptoms. To address these blood disorders, research are exp uh, researchers are exploring various treatment approaches. We already saw how exacel suppresses BCL11A to promote fetal hemoglobin and um, and thus a two-in-one treatment for both sickle cell disease and uh, TDT. In case of low cell, the HBB gene is edited to correct the genetic mutation that cause these disorders. In both cases, busulfan conditioning is used. During early trials of low cell, busulfan uh, side effects had caused a hold until it was proved that the adverse outcomes in two patients were not due to low cell but due to uh, other causes. At that point of time, uh, Bluebird uh, bio shares had fallen and then it picked up again. So, in summary, HBB gene is critical for the production of uh, beta globin uh, units, uh, subunits, uh, which together with alpha globin subunits form the hemoglobin molecules in red blood cells. Mutations in HBB genes can lead to various uh, blood disorders, and Bluebird uh, Bio's therapeutic approach is to correct the mutation in HBB gene and restore normal hemoglobin function to treat sickle cell disease. That Zinteglo is doing well in the market and is addressing TDT. Yeah, in Zinteglo, they perform a similar operation except that instead of correcting HBB, they add functional copies of a modified form of the beta globin gene uh, into a patient's own hematopoietic uh, stem cells to enable the production of a modified functional uh, adult hemoglobin. And once a patient has the uh, beta globin uh, gene uh, that has been inserted, they have the uh, potential to increase uh, Zinteglo derived adult hemoglobin and uh, total hemoglobin to normal or near normal levels.
that can uh, eliminate the need for regular uh, red blood cell transfusions and also prevent the uh, VOEs that happen for people with uh, beta thalassemia. So friends, now that uh, you know how exacel and lovo cell as well as Zinteglo work to combat uh, sickle cell disease and TDT, what are your thoughts? Uh, will you share? Will you think that the uh, shares will start doing better uh, now that um, uh, we are approaching PD UFA? Uh, which share will do better, CRISPR or Bluebird? And uh, when will these two shares start uh, showing gain in the share prices? Will the takeoff happen this month, given that PD UFA dates are in December 2023 for both the candidates? Please let me know in your comments. And yes, please do not forget to become a member if you haven't done so already. Bye for now.